Hello everybody and welcome to the part 4 of this series where I'll teach you how to build an interface like this one. Uh, so far we have... let's show what we have. Run it. So far we have this. So there's still some things to do. I'm gonna have to add these entry boxes and the buttons and configure them to essentially run the app or close the app. I mean run the, the script that we're adding or just close the app. And I'm gonna leave this one open. And we're gonna close this one because we're gonna have to edit. And I noticed in the last videos the, the font size was maybe a little bit too small. Um, I tried to increase on this one. Um, yeah, sorry for that. I think it's this uh, like this. It's it's better. Um, so let's get to it. Uh, what are we missing here? Just a quick sum up. Uh, we added these functions. If you don't understand any something uh, from this video, I uh, recommend you to watch the other three parts. The links are in the description and. What we did in the last one was uh, creating these functions and um, to well to close to force the entries to be caps lock and uh, three characters limit and both the to and from. So we're going to need to add uh, the entry boxes for the dates. So here are the entries for the cities and we need to add it for the departure dates, departure and return dates, which are these. And I'm gonna leave this one open, this is the final result, so uh, yeah, every time I, I bring it here, don't think it's related to the exact code we're doing, okay, it's just, uh, it's, it's better to, to show you the final result and explain exactly what we're doing here. So, I'm gonna switch this to the side and just grab it and here it is. Okay, so like these two that we added in the other video, it's really simple. You just create a departure date entry, which is a entry widget. It belongs to the frame number one because that's where our from city is. So kind of makes sense that you want the departure date to belong in the from <laughs> and um, same thing with this part text variable departure date one and we already created this variable and it's here this is the special kind of variables that we created before so we're just telling the app that we're gonna have another entry it's going to belong in this frame and it will be this string var variable and it's going to have a width of 12 and the same thing for the return date <coughs> so now we need to pack them and the way to do it is like we did here so let's get it departure date with the departure entry date and the return date entry here so let's see what's going on with this thing okay so you see there's something weird this is what happens with the pack so I did this kind of on, on purpose um, what happens here is the return date is being packed to the right so we're telling the label this is the label return date see, this part is being packed before the entry and we're telling it to stick to the right so what happens 
the label is being packed first but it's stuck to the right side so what we do it's easy first let me close this let's see what happens if I put it here run it again and here we have so if I pack the entry first to the right the return date even if it's set to the right side there's something on the right side before it so it just packs it after it okay I think this is uh, <laughs> nice demonstration of why the order is important and um, let's leave it like that okay so everything is kind of aligned I mean it's not perfect but I'm sure you guys can find better ways to align this these boxes um, okay let's close this and um, if you remember there's something that um, well actually let me show you I told you I wanted the user to input uh, anything that he input here will be turned to uppercase and it's not happening so we need to define that moment when tkinter sees that the user input something here and it's going to convert it to uppercase okay so we need to do that and the way to do it is simple I'm going to place this right below the uh, each entry. I even left the, the comment here. Um, well, you can find these comments in the in the article. So let's just make it. Uh, so this is the command that will tell the entry to run this function whenever the entry is changed by this event which is a key release. There are other events that you can try with. Um, I found that for this purpose, this one works really well. You can, you can add a bunch of other stuff uh, to the kind of events that you want to. Uh, again, I leave some links in the description with some resources for it, um, even maybe a book or two that I actually used to get some ideas. And, um, we're going to have to add, let me add this I'm gonna add here and this time it should work hopefully by the way this is a bind um, it's not a widget it's simply um, kind of self-explanatory again we are binding the entry to, uh, or I mean, we're binding this event and the execution of this function to this entry. I think that's the, <laughs> that's the way to go. So, I executed it. Let's see. All right, it's working. So, I'm pressing, I, I don't have caps lock enabled. Um, I think it's easy to, to see that it kind of microsecond it changes it so it's working and that's how it works that's how you can um, tell the user to I mean force the user to use caps lock and in the other line here you also forcing the user uh, not to have more than three characters on that field so okay that's enough for the entries and how to make it um, go uppercase. Uh, I think we can move on to uh, the buttons. I'm gonna place the button here, and this is our first button. Uh, it's showing me. Yeah, I'll I'll address that in a second. This first button belongs to the bottom frame. Uh, I still have the presentation. Yes. So 
the buttons belong to this frame here. Oh, actually, got a nicer. We're going to have a, a green button and a red button. So they belong in the bottom frame. That's what we're telling it here. And its text is going to be start. The command will be run app, which is a function that I haven't defined yet, but I will I will do it. Uh, background color, foreground color, relief, width, and the font. So you guys can tweak it all you want, raised, sunken. Uh, we saw the other options in the other video. Um, okay, let's see. This will probably not run. So this is the important part here. I want the button to do something, and in order to do it, to do that, I need to define a function. So I could, I could do, yeah. Let's do this one. Close app. Uh, we already defined close app uh, here. So it's just window dot destroy, which will essentially kill the app that that's running. And where is it? Okay, so command, yeah. Even though this is our start button, I'm just changing it now to close app just to see. We need to place it, don't forget. And I'm going to place it. I'm gonna use grid and again the grid from the bottom frame it's going to be zero zero it's going to be sticky to the west pad and pad pad x and pad y okay let's see what happens okay the start button is this still working of course and yeah what happens if we click we close the app. So I think it's working as intended. Um, so let's create the function to to be different than this one, the run app. And the run app for now it's going to be really simple. Uh, I'll change it later because we're gonna have to tell the app. Right now it's just for testing purposes. Uh, but we're going to have to do something with the script from the flight scraper itself. So print, it's running. What? Oh, stupid. Noob mistake. Okay, so uh, this time the console will print it's running if the button is clicked or pushed run app okay f5 it's running and take a look here at the cons console it's going to show up here it's running great uh, it's still not doing anything really impressive but uh well i mean just kind of impressive <laughs> well but still it's not what we want so I'm going to add the button to uh, exit because we kind of want that feature on our app. So same thing, we already used the close app before. This is going to be a red button and it's going to be on the column one. So it's going to be on the right and it's going to be sticky to the west and the same padding here okay let's check now here we go this one is running and this one will kill the app great this part is working um, there's just a few adjustments we need to do in order to complete this tutorial um, and those are regarding the, um, the running of the, of the app the running of the script so, uh, let me check. Yeah, um, there's there's not much else we can add here. So I'm gonna try to explain this part with the uh, running of the app. And 
this file which should be on the same folder as this one you're adding so you can see this one is this that we're adding and this other file well actually this one should be placed on the same folder and this one has my credentials I'm not going to show it to you you need to edit this credentials part with your email your username whatever and the reason why it has to be here on this folder well it could be anywhere else but to make things simple the reason why it should be here is because we're going to import this script on our app and we want the app to run this script with all the with all the functions that are inside it so we have this class here and um, let me show you so the way to do it is simply from flight scraper uh, bot import flight bot okay and if you see over here this is the class flight bot so it's going to import all this stuff load more the page scrape the bot start start kayak um, and it will basically do everything that we defined in the previous article so this is the way to use another script inside uh, well one script inside other script or one class inside another script uh, I actually sometimes I develop some small tools that I create and leave in one big script that later I can import but anyways that's off topic um, right now we should be able to start using the functions inside the flight bot so let's complete it and so this is where the run app comes into place because we are going to say okay when we run the app instead of printing it's running it's going to do a bunch of stuff that's inside this script so hopefully you guys are following this it's not really that complicated but um, if you have any questions do let me know in the comments I'll try to address it and yeah, let's get uh, the remaining part of this function. So, first things first, we're going to need to get the user inputs. And this print here is totally optional. It just, uh, I like to have things commenting, commented. Um, whether in the console or in the in the script to to be able to know what the app is doing so this is an easy part I'm going to get the input from the user so this is really simple to understand user cd from user cd to user date depart user date return this is simply getting whatever is on the entries and once we get it we can run the the scraping script because we're going to pass these arguments in those functions well, in, in that function so how do we do that easy let me get the second part of this function and here's the second part of the bot so if this is your first time working with classes and um, well, it, it took a while for me to, to understand the, the technicalities, let's say. Um, what we're doing here is we're importing, we're, we're creating this variable that's essentially an instance of this class. And once we do it, we can start using the functions that are inside this script. Uh, we have the start function somewhere here. We can start using these functions with uh, with this command on this other script. So we initiate the flight bot 
and from there we can actually start the bot. So what are the parameters here? User CD from, user CD to, user date depart, and user date return. Again, specificities for this bot, uh, I recommend you to either read the other article or watch the other video. I have a video on this one too. Um, it's a longer one. I decided to break this one in um, smaller bits. But yeah, make sure to watch that video if you want to understand what it, what is this doing. Um, yeah, I think it should be ready to run. Uh, let's see. Let's execute it. Okay. So we got something. Let's see. Let's see Lisbon. Let's go to Singapore. I always use Singapore. I don't know why. I really enjoyed Singapore when I was there. <laughs> well, let's see if the bot can run. Okay, and this just opened, which is probably familiar from the other uh, from the other article. So we're actually checking kayak. And it seems to be working. Okay, so it's gonna do its thing. I'm not gonna hold this here. Um, should take a while for the for the bot to work. So it's essentially running. Let's see if it can close the pop-up. Are you uh, close the pop-up? Nice. Good. So it's it's running, it's going. Um, yeah, I think I think this settles it. Uh, the app is built. The bot is running. Uh, it seems to be working all right. And this is how you create an interface to use with another script. So as always, your feedback is much appreciated, so make sure to leave a comment if you have something to say, any kind of project you'd like me to, to check or to, to try. And um, yeah, we can see the bot is running here, it's getting, it's getting stuff. So yeah, leave a comment, leave a like. If you enjoyed the videos, you can also subscribe to get the last, um, well, the next ones. And if in the description, I always leave uh, some some links that I usually talk about in the videos. And yeah, that's it. Thanks for watching. See you on the next one.